All right. I hesitate to even say this. It's probably going to be a shorter sermon tonight, but usually when I say that, we end up going over an hour, but we'll see um, what it's like tonight. Now, you may be wondering, you know, normally on Wednesday night, we do our Bible study. We should be in 1 Kings uh, this week, but because I wasn't here on Sunday, I, uh, I wasn't able to preach what I really wanted to preach on Sunday morning, and it's our new challenge. So if you remember, in the month of February, we did our soul winning challenge, which was every day in the month of February, we were supposed to find somebody to preach the gospel to, an attempt to give the gospel at least one person every day. This month, we're doing our prayer challenge. We just went over that during announcements time. 15 minutes, write down extra prayers, pay attention to, to God answering your prayers, and pray for everyone on our prayer requests. Um, the next challenge is going to be in the month of April. And, and get used to this because we've got at least one more coming up for, for May. So I've got at least, I've got four challenges in mind that I want to do. And we're probably going to be doing these every year. This is something I think is going to help. It's something we're, we should be going back over and hitting the reset button every year and making sure that we're, we're getting these things right in our life and dedicating the time appropriately. And the goal of all of these um, various challenges is to help you to make changes in your life I mean, real significant changes to propel you forward in the Christian life and, and to help you to grow more. And, and that's why we do these for an entire month where we're focused on one thing. You know, you get a lot of preaching, you get a lot of teaching, you know, twice on Sunday and once on Wednesday, you hear, Wednesday, you hear a lot of different things. And, you know, as we grow, there's only so much you could really be focused on at a time anyways, right? I mean, it's great to get the extra knowledge. It's great to get the learning. We ought to be making changes as much as possible to be more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That's the goal. But realistically, you know, as human beings in, in a sinful nature, we have a tendency to fall. We have a tendency to forget. We don't always keep everything in mind. So the, the, the point of these challenges is really to maintain a focus and, and, and attack one single area during that month, but not to let that slip after the month. So February is over, right? But hopefully going out and trying to, to, to give the gospel to people has had more of an impact on you since you've done that for 28 days straight to want to then be able to be more mindful at least of Hey, I'm at the gas station. Hey, I'm over here. We're at, we're at, I'm at the grocery store. Hey, here's someone. I think they could probably need to hear the gospel. You know, and, and have that more in the front of your mind because you've done that so much. So hopefully you're not just doing this and then just say, well, that's done. Forget about it. Because if, if, if even if you've done it, these things every single day and that's your attitude now, you didn't, you didn't learn anything. You did not learn what you're supposed to be doing. The, the point of these is to change your habits. So this month, the prayer challenge the, the point is to get people who maybe haven't been spending very much time in prayer, that hasn't been part of your regular routine, to force it now to become a part of that routine. This is something that we're doing together as a church. This is something we're all getting involved in. This is something that you can be a part of. Yeah, you can hear a sermon and say, yeah, no, I, I know I should pray more. But this is something to help you day after day remember, oh yeah, you know, it's that prayer chat. Oh, we got I got to do this. And to help you to make that part of your routine because throughout the month, you'll be able to find these times now where you could say, you know what? The morning works really good for me or the evening works really good for me. Or you know what? In order to get all the prayer time I need to get in, I'm going to split it up in a couple of, you know, whatever that may be. The goal is to get you now as we end the month of March to continue your prayer into April. But to get you on that, that, mind, that mindset of thinking about, I need to be doing this. So the new challenge, look down here at verse number 14 in Ephesians chapter 5. The Bible says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days, of evil. The days are evil. Our challenge for the month of April is for you to redeem the time. Make use of your time. All of the challenges that we're doing require you to, to devote time to serving God. Anything that you're going to be doing in service to God is going to require time. 
And time management is a big problem for many people. I know it is for me. I've got a lot of things going on. I've got a big family. I've got another job that I work in addition to pastoring this church. I've got a lot of things going on. So in order to make everything work, I need to make the best use of my time as possible. I need to make sure that I'm, 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 I'm seeking God first. And I'm saying, you know what? No matter what's coming up with all these various things in my life, I'm going to make sure I'm in church. No matter what's coming up, I'm going to make sure that I don't just throw off my Bible reading. No matter what's coming up, I'm not just going to forsake soul winning, right? All these various things that I know I should be doing. I'm not just going to, oh, well, I'm kind of tired tonight, so, well, there goes my prayer. Because everything else got in the way in my life. We need to refocus. We need to, to, to change the, that we're, we're esteeming the things of God as very important in our life, that we're putting these at, at the forefront. Other things are very important, and I'm not, I'm not denying that for a second. But if something has to give, are you real, is the first thing that you're going to give up just service to God? That should be the last thing. All throughout Scripture, you know, the Bible talks about your first fruits. God wants you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We're going to look at that verse later. You know, God wants you to seek Him first. He wants you to put Him first. The first two commandments, you know, to, to um, worship the Lord your God, not have any other gods before Him, and not to you know bow down to, to graven images or to make these graven images. God wants you serving him and him alone. God's a jealous God and he wants your attention on him. He's saved your soul. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, your soul is saved. He's bought you with a price. It's our reasonable service. It's our reasonable service to give him everything. Literally, our whole life for him to the one that gave his life for us. That's our reasonable service. And when you think about giving your whole life, that's a lot. Yet many people don't even want to give a couple hours to go to church or to read their Bible or to pray or to, you know, to do all these various things. So we're starting with a lot of the basics. And we're trying to get these hammered down and to be a part of our life and to get them installed as to say, you know what, this is my habit and see, human beings, we're creatures of habit. If we can start getting things to be a habit for us, it's going to be a lot harder to break those things, a lot easier to keep doing them. But if it's something that you just, you're only going to do every time you randomly think about it. I remember before I got into church, I got saved when I was 20 years old. And before I really got into a good church, I would go to church sometimes. Every once in a blue moon, I would show up. And listen to it, you know, whenever, whenever I was convicted enough saying, you know what, man, I really got to get in church. Like, it's just been a really long time, and I'm just kind of going way downhill here. I need to go and see God. Go to church once or twice. Things are going okay. Doesn't matter, you know, forget about it. You got other things going on. Or, you know, I really ought to read my Bible. Where is that again? And you look in your shelf. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. You know, read a couple chapters, go to Proverbs, go to whatever your favorite book is, and you read a little bit, and you go, man, it's good. Yeah, I should read my Bible more. I like that. And then it goes back on the shelf, and you forget where it went. We need to make these changes. But see, if it's not a habit already, you're not always going to be thinking about it. You're going to be thinking about the, th the other things that are habits. You're going to be thinking about, oh, Tonight's Thursday night at 7. It's my favorite TV show or whatever, right? You, all the various things that you've allowed to become habit-forming in your life. You don't forget those things. I guess these days, what is it? Uh, who, who, who has a problem forgetting to check their Facebook? A lot of people don't have a problem with that. Hopefully, you all have a problem with that here. Would to God you had a problem with that. But, I mean, that's one of the big things, social media. Everyone's getting on social media. Oh, I got to check. Oh, I got to check this. Every, you know, I got to check my email every day. It's something I got to check my email every day. And I do. And I'm not saying that's sinful or wrong. But the thing is, if that's what you're doing and you're, you're not doing the right things, you're not doing the things that you should be doing, then you have a problem. Now, what we're going to be focusing on for this, cha this challenge, this is going to take a conscious effort. And this is going to be a little bit different from the other challenges because it's going to be 
geared towards you individually. So I'm not going to be able to spell out exactly what that is for you. Redeeming the time is going to, is going to be something first and foremost. What, what I want the focus to be is to identify something in your life that takes your time, that is something that you do regularly, that you could easily do without, that, that's probably a waste of your time. And I'm not saying something, you know, again, I just want to be very clear about this. I, you know, having some entertainment is not a sin, okay? Having a little bit of time to relax, and if there's a hobby or something that you do, you know, for fun, that's not a sin. And, and, and I want to be extremely clear about that because, I, you know, I don't want anyone to misinterpret what I'm saying. However, there are many things, especially things that might become an addiction for you. Facebook is a perfect example. Perfect example. Because ultimately, there's really no good that you're just coming out of checking Facebook. Again, I'm not saying it's a sin, but you just you go and look through, you see what other people are doing. Okay, whatever. If you can't cut that out, I mean, can you imagine right now, say, if, you know, if I took that away for 30 days and just did not check that, is that going to, you know, like, can you even do it? If you're going to have a serious problem doing something like that, that's a good idea for something that you should try doing without during this month to make sure that that's not controlling you, that that's not consuming you. Because oftentimes, these things that become more of an addiction, you end up spending way more time on it, either than you realize or than you plan on doing. And as we're doing these various challenges, they take time. They got to put a time frame on our prayer challenge, so, which means you need to find that time to do that. There is time it takes to go out and find somebody to preach the gospel to. There's some time involved with that. There's going to be other things coming up, other challenges that are going to require your time. And I want to help you to identify an area where you can eliminate something and replace it with some other aspect of serving God. And the things I'm talking about, that's why I want you to try to think about to yourself. The most worthless thing that you could think of that is a regular habit that you do every day. Something to, to just say, I could do, you know, whether it be a television program, whether it be Facebook, whether it be, you know, any of these types of things where it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of entertaining, but I'm spending every single day, I'm spending this much time on this, on this one thing. Can I do without that? And, and again, part of this is going to be testing just to see, can you do it? Turn, if you would, to James chapter 4. Our time is precious. We saw in Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We don't want to be foolish. And if you don't want to be a fool, then we need to avoid doing just a bunch of foolish things. If you're just spending your entire day doing things that don't matter at all and, and filling your mind with things that just don't matter at all, if it's all just entertainment, if it's all just vanity... Guess what? You're living like a fool. Because you're not making use of the time that God has given you on this earth. He says, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. There's a lot of evil out there. We need to redeem. We need to make the best use of our time possible right now. We need to keep thinking that we don't want to let ourselves just get so relaxed and, and so caught up in all these other cares of the world and all these other things and all this other nonsense out there that's trying to get your attention and distract you from doing what's right. We need, we need to take, make use of our time. And that's why he says, wherefore be ye not unwise... Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. When you realize, you think about, how important is God in my life? And then once you answer that question, ask yourself, how important is what God wants for me in my life? Which is God's will. What does God want for you? Does God want for you to spend every night, every evening, surfing the internet, just for whatever. 
You think that's what, if you were to ask yourself, is this what God wants for me to do right now? Does he want me playing all these games, go, you know, and just, just doing anything? And like I said, look, there's a time and place to relax. There's a time and place to get some entertainment. And I'm leaving that up to you to determine that amount. Dude, I mean, I'm not going to judge you personally on whatever you determine is right in your life, but I'm bringing this up for you to make up your own mind on what you think is important with your time. When you think about how short our life truly is, look at James chapter 4, verse 13. James chapter 4, verse 13. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The Bible says our lives of vapor. And you know what? The older that you get, the more you realize how true that statement is. Kids, listen up. Because when you're really young, it's a lot harder to understand this truth. The time doesn't seem to go by as quickly as it does the older that you get. You talk to any elderly person and they could think back 40, 50 years as it's like yesterday and go, wow, I don't know where the time went. I'm turning 40 years old this next month. And that's not very old, but it's old enough to know, wow, I don't know where the time went. All of a sudden, I just had my fifth child. And, and I could think back all the way back to high school and beyond and just think that, wow, it wasn't that long ago, yet it's been a lifetime. We don't know how much time we have on this earth. Nobody does. I lost a good friend just one year ago, 40 years old, gone. People die younger. People die as children. People die as teenagers. People die as young adults. People die you know, going all the way up. We got, we got a church member that is a father who's 100 years old. He'll be 101 in August. We don't know when our time is. All the more reason we ought to be redeeming that time and making that best use. If you were to, to, to look back on your life today, what is it that would be important to you? What is it that you would wish you had spent your time doing? I'm sure we could all think of things. Man, I wish I didn't do that. That was kind of a big waste of time. I can think of almost my entire 20s of just wasting, going out partying and drinking, doing stupid things that had zero profit and only caused damage in my life. Wow, what a waste of some really good years of my life. What a total waste. We have short time. We need to, to plan our lives and plan our days, plan our schedules accordingly and make sure we don't just get caught up in just silliness and nonsense and vain things, but that we could really push to do a lot more. I don't know about you, and I don't know what your priorities are, but I want to make a big impact as much as is, is it possible with my life in the lives of other people to bring glory and honor unto Jesus Christ. Why? Because I love God and I love that he saved my soul and I'm thankful for that. And I want to offer up myself as a living sacrifice and to, and to do whatever it is he has for me. And I'm sure many people here probably have that same yearning, that same desire, that same feeling of saying, you know what? Yes, I am really thankful. Yes, I do love God and I want to do more for him. Yet, when it comes into translating that into how are you performing that, there seems to be a disconnect. And look, I'm not thinking about anybody here this evening. Okay, I'm not, I'm not thinking, yeah, I got you in mind. No. This is all, I mean, this sermon really is just for you to just introspect. Look inside yourself and think, are my actions showing how important God is to me? Does the way that I spend my time reflect how much I feel like I ought to be doing for God? Anything, and I'm going to get back to the challenge. Anything that, first of all, I want to tackle things that might be a bigger problem. Because we want to redeem the time. But a bigger problem is something that's like an addiction. Just a total waste of time or some habitual sin. 
So it, it may not necessarily be an addiction. Maybe it's some sin that's taken, you know, something that you have in your life that's taken up some time and, and that you know, I shouldn't be doing this. I know that this is a sin. I know I shouldn't be looking at this. Whatever it is, okay, I want you to, to help to get that out of your life. And I want you to focus on that one thing for the entire month of April. Think about that every single day and say, you know what? I'm going to get this taken care of. I'm going to get this sin out of my life. I'm going to stop wasting my time in this one area. Maybe there's multiple areas where you're wasting time. I don't know. But just focus on one. Try to say, you know what? I, it may not be that much. It may be this small piece, but I'm going to take the whole month and I'm not going to forget about this. And I'm going to make sure by the time this month is over that I have just completely gotten this out. And I'm just going to make that one small change and then I'm going to move on to the next thing. But this is what we want to be focusing on for the month of April. Turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 6. And I'll give you a few more ideas. I've already mentioned Facebook. I've mentioned television, video games, right? I know some, for me personally, video games, those stupid little video games. I had to get rid of all of them from my phone. All of them. You get those stupid little video games. It takes like one minute to play, you know, Bejeweled or whatever. There's those little games. You say, oh, okay, well, it's, I mean, it's only a minute, right? No big deal. 30 minutes later, you're going, oh, wow. That was a big waste of time. And, and, you know, I know how tempting these various things can be. I know how easy it is to waste your time, which is one of the reasons why this is a challenge for the month of April. Because it is so easy. It is so simple to get wrapped up into a bunch of nonsense and just make a total, utter waste. We all know the feeling. We know the feeling that you get when you've just wasted it. In I, I used to play this game. It's called civilization on the computer. You build like this whole, you start with like one guy and you start building this whole big city and you're, you know, you're in competition with other people. And it's kind of weird because it's almost like you're playing God. It's really what, what the game's about. And I'm not going to go get on a whole rant about the game, but it's one of those games that takes a good 12 to 18 hours to complete. And I used to get, I would start on like a Friday evening and get off of work or whatever. Get on that game, just stay all the way up till the next day, done. And then you think, wow, you must say, yo, you won or whatever. You got first place. Yeah, you got my high score. What a waste of time. It's like every single time I did that, I didn't do that very often. But every time I did it, I'd be like, why did I just do that? You know, you, you, you get wrapped up in it. It's like four in the morning. Like, oh man, I know I should go to sleep, but. Uh, I'm just going to take another turn. And each turn then takes like half an hour each and stuff. It's crazy. It's craziness. And it's a big waste of time. And any of you start thinking back, if I, if I were to start back, just personally, if I think of all the hours wasted on so many things, man, you, I could, I mean, there's so much that could be done. So much could, that could be done in that time. And why are we willing to stay, like, like I was, willing to stay up all night to play some stupid video game, but not willing to stay, stay up all night in prayer? Not willing to stay up all night and read my Bible? You know, when has that ever happened? You know, think about the things that you were willing to be late to work for. You were willing to stay up extra late for. You were willing to take a day off of work so I could go get in line at the movie theater and get my ticket to go see the the. The, the premiere of whatever's coming out, the Star Wars or whatever. I'm going to wait in line and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to be ready for, for Black Friday or whatever, whatever it is that's your thing, whatever it is that you've esteemed so high in your life and that you're willing to give up things for. When's the last time you've given up in order to serve God, in order to do the things that God wants you to do? I mentioned Facebook, television, video games. Here's another one, your diet. You know, thinking, you know, considering that we have the, uh, we're living in the, the, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And, and, and there are people that, that even in our church, you know, we're, we're, we're praying for people. We want people to get better. But the way that we eat, the way that we live impacts how much we can do for God. It impacts how much time we could spend. You know, this is a church we focus a lot on going out door to door and preaching the gospel to every creature. Well, guess what? 
If you allow yourself to just eat a bunch of junk, eat a bunch of sugar, not get any exercise, and you start gaining a whole bunch of weight, you're not going to be physically capable of going out and doing very much for God. We need to be focused on these things and say, well, you know, whatever it is, I want this to be real broad. Think about what impacts you. What is it that, that personally is in your life that you know you need to change that's causing you negative effects, that's, that's causing you not to be able to be as productive for God as you want to be and get it out. And we're going to focus on that for the whole month of April. And I'm not going to be asking you what that is. This is all just completely personal. If you want to share that, that's fine. Again, at the end of the month, you want, you want to give glory to God, you just want to give some type of a testimony, let me know. I'd be more than happy to, to let you share that. But this is going to be between you and God ultimately. Okay? And I want you to try to focus on one thing to get that out. One thing, hopefully it's something that, that's kind of part of your day-to-day -day life, something that's a regular routine or semi right? you know, whether it's not day-to-day, -day, maybe it's every week or every, you know, every few days or something like that to say, you know what, I'm going to try to remove this and replace it with something that's, that's good. Romans chapter 6, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Which, by the way, Romans 6 is a continuation from Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, at the end, the Bible says, uh, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And this is, that's the answer to those people that think that like, if you sin after you're saved, somehow you're going to go to hell or somehow you're not forgiven for those things or whatever. No, look, it doesn't matter how much you sin as far as your salvation goes. It doesn't matter how much you sin after you're saved, you're still saved. Okay? But just because that's a fact, just because Christ paid for all of our sins, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2, God forbid. Of course we shouldn't just keep sinning. Of course that's not what God wants for us to do. Of course that's not what we teach people to do. Just say, oh yeah, see, accept that free gift and then just go off and sin. No. Accept the free gift because you need it. Because there's no other way into heaven. Because you are going to sin because you have a sinful nature. But should you continue in sin? Absolutely not. God forbid that you would continue in sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let that ring through. If you have a sin, if there's something that's plaguing you, if there's something that's in your life that you know needs to get out, it's, a, it's this, this, this one thing that's bugging you, focus on that. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Use this passage to help you to get that out of your life and think about these things and say, you know what? I am dead to sin. Why? Because I'm dead with Christ. Verse number three, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We want to walk in that spirit. We want to walk in that newness of life. Remember that you were saved from your sins. Remember that there's a new creature that's living inside of you as a result of your salvation. Let's walk in that newness of life. That newness of life wants nothing to do with vanity, wants nothing to do with sin, wants nothing to do with the things that are just going to bring us down. Verse number five, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And that's, you know, I'm making an emphasis on these things that can be an addiction because we don't want to serve sin. If you have an addiction, even, you know, even something that inherently by in and of itself is not necessarily a sin, if it's an addiction, that is a sin. If it's something that you can't give up, it's something that you can't do without, now you've become a slave to that, that's a sin. Some people are addicted to eating food. And when I say addicted, I don't mean because you have to eat every day. <laughs> we know what we have to eat in order to survive. I'm about people who just, you know, something bad happens or whatever, they just go straight to food and they have to have that food and, and, and have this, this compulsion just to do it. Or, or, you know, similarly, the alcoholic needs to drink, drink alcohol. Or the, the internet addict has to go and, and just get on social media and just do it just because they just have to do it. What, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. 
Focus on that one thing. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign. Reign means it's in control. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. We, what, part of the thing with redeeming the time is we're getting control of our life. We're getting control of our flesh. We're getting control of how we spend our time. We don't want sin to be in control. We don't want sin in our flesh to reign. We want to take charge. We want to say, this is how I'm going to spend my time. I'm not going to waste my time anymore. I'm going to do what's right. Verse 13, Neither yield you yourselves as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall ha not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Again, he's making a, a, a second emphasis of that point. Just because you're not under the law, you're under grace, doesn't mean that you should sin. And sin is the transgression of the law. The law is not gone. He's saying you're free from the law. You're free from the curse. You're free. You know, you're under grace, but you still shouldn't sin. Don't continue in sin. We're not under the law. We're under grace. He says, God forbid that we should continue in sin. Know ye not th to that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of, un of righteousness. Excuse me. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your, your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness." For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things where ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he's, he's going and comparing and contrasting your flesh versus the spirit and saying, you know, you, you know in time past, you, you had these things in your flesh, but hey, what fruit? fruit had you no sins? What fruit had you with that stuff? It just yields death. There's no good that comes out of it. So whatever it is that you're thinking about tonight, whatever it is that's in your mind personally saying, you know what? I can do without this. I should probably get this out of my life. I've been struggling with this and I really need to, to just make sure that I could take care of this and get it out. Just think about what good is it doing? And you probably already know the answer. It's not doing anything. Free yourself from that bondage. Life is too short to be wasting our time on stupid things. If you're unable to think of anything you can possibly give up for a month, because maybe you don't watch TV, maybe you don't spend time online, maybe you don't play games or any of the other things I mentioned, maybe you got all that stuff, and if you do, praise the Lord, I am very happy to hear that. That's great. And maybe, and maybe you're still just thinking, you know what, nothing's really coming to my mind. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't seem to have like this major sin problem or something that's just been plaguing me. You know, obviously you know you sin, but I don't have any one thing that's really been a problem. Well, are you attending all of the services? Are you going out at all of the soul winning times? You know, are you, are you spending all of your time laboring for money and not enough time laboring for the Lord? You know, you, you could be not getting involved. Like, let's say you're real busy at work. Turn, if you went to Matthew chapter 6, maybe, maybe you are just really busy at work. And you have, you know, you're not sinning. You're not getting on social media. You're not watching TV. You're not playing games. You're not wasting your time because you're busy working, right? So you're not falling into a lot of these categories. Your diet's just fine. Are you spending enough time or any time serving God because you, that, that very well can, you know, many people fall into that category. You say, well, I'm not really sinning. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not lusting in my heart after people. I'm not, you know, 
an alcoholic, I'm not, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, think of all these various things that so many people have problems with. You could be living a very clean life. You could be not involved in all kinds of things and you could be not even be wasting your time because you're doing something actually productive with your time, you know, whether it be in business or what have you. But I'll tell you what, if this is you, if this is the category you fall into, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6 and you still need to analyze yourself and take a step back and say, is God, am I doing what God wants? Because even though you're not doing those things, does God want you to sin? No. So you, you know, you're, you're, you're satisfying that area. But are you ultimately walking in the path that God has laid out for you? Do you think that God just wants you to be working in your business all the time? And that's what he wants you to do so you could accumulate a lot of wealth and live a comfortable life. Is that what God wants for, for you to do? The answer is no. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse number 24. Matthew 6, verse number 24, the Bible reads, No man can serve two masters. And let this sink in. The Bible reads, For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon there is just, it's money. You, can't, you cannot have two masters. If you're serving God, you're going to serve God. If you're serving money, you're going to serve money. And the Bible saying, you're, you, you can't serve them both. You cannot do it. Why? Because it requires too much of your time. If you're serving money, it's going to take a lot of your time to do that. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. You're going to have to spend a ton of your time doing that. And what happens as a result? Well, you can't serve God. And if you're serving God, and you're doing everything that God wants you to do with your life and focus on the things that are truly important in God's eyes, you're not going to have time to be serving money and just be focused on getting a whole bunch of money in your life. And there's a difference between serving money and working in order to provide for your household. Okay? There's a difference there. There's a distinction. We need to work in general. I mean, we, we, we need to be able to, do, to provide. God has commanded us to provide for our households as men, and, um, you know, he's created us to be hard workers. But who are you serving? Verse number 25 here, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now look, these things... The other things that I was talking about is a joke compared to these things. He's talking about essentials here. Look, he's talking about, you know, what, should I, what am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to drink tomorrow? What am I going to wear? These are essential things that any person that you talk to is going to say, well, yeah, that's reasonable to be concerned about that, right? That's a reasonable thing that you should be concerned with. What am I going to eat? I don't know. What am I going to eat? I need to get this figured out. As opposed to, what am I going to do if I don't check my Facebook status? Right? I mean, you can see how just, just so far removed these other things are. Yet, God is saying, don't worry about it. Don't be so worried about it. Does that mean God doesn't want you to work? No. no he wants you to work. He wants you to work hard. But he doesn't want you focused on that. He doesn't want you just worrying about, you know, even these essentials. Why? Verse 32 says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. 
God's teaching us something here, and, it, and it's hard. This is hard to get, to let sink in to our heart and to our mind. And to have this level of faith where we could really say, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it. God's going to provide for me. I'm just going to do the things that God told me to do. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek the kingdom of God first. First. Notice that. First. Remember I talked about that earlier. That's what God wants you to do first. This isn't the last thing on the list. This isn't if you have enough time in your day. This isn't if you could make it into your schedule. All of the things that we get so stressed about and, and spend so much time on thinking about and worrying about he said, you don't have to worry about those things. I want you worried about just doing what's right by me. Put that first. You have time to do some of this other stuff. You, you could go to work. You could you provide for your family. You work. But first, I want you seeking the kingdom of God. First, I want you seeking me and doing what I want for you to do first. Then you can look after yourself and everything else. Because he said, you won't have to do that because I'll take care of you. This is what he's teaching us. Hopefully you'll take me up on this challenge. This is, this is a church-wide thing. I want every individual in this church, because look, I've been there before. I've been in the pews. I've heard the preaching. There's been many sermons I've heard that have made a big impact on my life that have really helped me to make changes in my life. But the thing is, if you, if you don't continue with something, if you cannot keep going day after day, oftentimes you're a forgetful hearer. You, you don't end up putting it into action, and you're right back at where you started. That's not where I want you to be. So keep it in mind, we're ending the prayer challenge Friday, but hopefully you're not ending your regular prayer time on Friday. Hopefully you're not going to stop praying for everyone in our prayer list on Friday. Hopefully you're not going to cut your time back down to a couple minutes from 15 minutes. That's not the goal. That's not the point. April, figure out what it is in your own life. Hopefully it's not that hard. I mean, well, hopefully, it is, hopefully it's extremely hard. Hopefully it's really hard for you to figure out one thing, one thing that you can do without, one thing that's been plaguing you, one thing that you're just a total waste. Eliminate that, but don't just eliminate it. Replace it with something good. Replace it with something that you know is, is something you guys... Here's the thing. You could get rid of one thing and then just replace it with some other waste of time. And then what's the point of, of getting rid of the one to begin with? What's the point? Have something in mind of what you're going to do. There's a... Um, a lot of people have this when, when you're, we're trying to overcome addictions, especially, especially something like smoking. It's a really good example. I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to be addicted to smoking cigarettes. So I know this firsthand. There are certain times when the cigarette is just, oh man, I'm gonna, I gotta have my cigarette. I'm gonna wake up in the morning, I'm gonna drink a cup of coffee and I'm gonna have a cigarette. I'm gonna have a meal, I'm gonna go out to lunch and then as soon as I'm done eating, I'm gonna have that cigarette. And anyone who smokes has been addicted, you know what I'm talking about. There's these times where it's like, and this is, those are the times when you feel the most like you want it. So when you're trying to quit, those are the worst times. That's like, wow, this is really strong. This urge, this fleshly desire to do this is, is overwhelming. And I just want to give in because I've been so used to doing this. And this is the time where it's, it's the strongest, that feeling. So what many people will do, replace it with something else. I've seen, I know a lot of people, I say, you know, they carry around suckers with them because there's something about just, just putting that, that object in their mouth to just forget, you know, to, to try to help them to overcome that, right? And if, it, if whatever it is that you're trying to get rid of your life, if, there's a, if it's an addiction, let's replace the bad habit with a good habit. Why not get, and I'll tell you this, here, this can apply to just about everybody in here. Start doing the memory verses. Okay? There, I said it. 
Most people haven't been doing the memory verses at all. Start doing the memory verses. Okay, now look, this is all voluntary, but I've I, I preached it before. The Bible is clear on it. God wants you to have his word in your heart. In your heart. It's not going to be in your heart if you're not memorizing, if you're not putting it to memory. Put it in there. Replace it with something, because that's something, no matter what you're doing, no matter what the time of day is, you could keep a little notebook in your pocket, a little, a little note card. Meditate on Scripture. It could be these, it could be something else. I mean, just, it doesn't have to be this passage. It could be whatever you want. It's good. You know what's good. You know that's what God wants. Does, does anyone have a question here on whether or not God wants you to memorize His Word and keep it in your heart? Well, that's a good thing. No doubt about it. Or replace it with prayer time. Replace it with reading. Repla you know, reading God's Word. Something. Do what you know God would want you to do instead of a waste of time. I'm going to replace it with this. This is good. And then maybe you'll form a new habit <laughs> during that time. And that would be a good habit. Let's take the month of April to redeem our time. Let's make the use out of it and do as much as we can for the Lord. And it's going to help you with the future challenges because coming in May, we got another challenge coming forward. It's going to, guess what? It's going to take some time. If you could get some time freed up in April for our challenge in May, it's going to do you well. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your words. God, I thank you for the encouragement that we get from your words, dear Lord. Um, I pray that you would please help us all. We, none of us are perfect here, dear God, myself included. I have the areas that I need to work on in my life just as much as anyone else here, dear God. And I pray that you would please help me and help everybody else here to uh, be strong in our spirit, to, to put away the deeds of the flesh and to identify in our life, God, the, the areas where we could serve you better, where we can do more for you, where we could get rid of of some sin, some waste of time, and, and really take our life serious that you've given us here. We, we do have a purpose to serve. The purpose is not just so that we could get saved and go to heaven. The purpose is so we get saved and serve you and minister unto others and, and do follow the example of Jesus Christ who had a lot of work that he did in just a very short period of time, dear God. I pray that you please help us to, to really analyze our life and, and determine what's important to us and, um, and redeem the time that you've given us, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.